open. As you can see right here, this tight end, he's just getting open every single time. We have a new coaching adjustment on the defensive side, which is zone coverage. And watch what happens on this particular play, as this time, Darius Slay is all over it. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about coaching adjustments in Madden 23 on offense and defense, including the new coaching adjustments that were just added. If you guys want to see an updated video on this particular subject as the game Woo! changes throughout the year, because a lot of times they really like to change the game, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section. Starting off with the offensive coaching adjustments, passing and catching has really changed a lot this year, so I wanted to see if there was any potential benefits between balanced, conservative, and aggressive. To find out, I simply went into a game with two minute quarters and essentially just threw the exact same pass over and over and over all game to see what would end up with the best stats. I start off with balanced, which essentially allows you the freedom to do whatever you want after the catch. Conservative is really more about a rack catch every single time, where aggressive is more about an aggressive catch every single time. The play that I'm going to use throughout this entire video for every experiment is going to be the Z spot and go. All I'm going to do is put the B round of streak so it'll open up the corner route a little bit more against certain coverages. And then I'm going to force feed it to that route every single time. The first thing I noticed on this default mode is that the red zone seemed a lot easier. Things like rack catching are not very useful in the red zone, where aggressive catching might be a little bit better. The results for balanced at the end of the game were 358 passing yards, a 37% completion percentage, mostly because I just kept throwing to the same receiver over and over, four touchdown passes, one interception. But the thing that I'm really gauging the most is the average yards per attempt, which here were 11.1. .1. Next, I did conservative, which is rack catching, and I really expected the average to go up you can still aggressive catch as you can see here i still nailed an aggressive catch every once in a while although mostly this resulted in a lot of drops even in wide open pass plays like this where you expect to catch and run to be more beneficial i got tackled right away so i really didn't see a ton of benefits there and i saw a lot bigger negative result in the red zone the final tally was about the same amount of yards and about the same amount of completion percentage but the touchdown to interceptions was completely flipped i had one touchdown now to four interceptions and my average went down instead of up the last setting is aggressive. Now, I didn't know what to expect here, but I was caught completely by surprise as essentially this was the only setting where I didn't get one aggressive catch, but I did, however, get two penalties. So for whatever reason, you draw more penalties with the aggressive setting, but you don't catch the ball very well at all. I thought in the red zone it would definitely be an improvement, but it wasn't. So at the end of the day, this one was probably the worst one. I even started noticing that the targeting system stopped working later in the game what? when I started throwing the ball inside of the reticle. For whatever reason, the receiver would just miss it half the time so this one was definitely the worst and the stats back it up my lowest completion percentage yards and touchdowns i don't even think i scored in this game and the average is atrocious at a 6.5 blocking's a lot worse in madden 23 right now so i thought that maybe changing the blocking would be a better setting to use this year conservative doesn't make any sense because it says it decreases the amount of time that it holds the blocks where aggressive says it holds the blocks longer but at the end of the day it really did not as i got about the same three or four seconds before i had to throw the ball the only real improvement was that I got way more holding penalties. Two out of the first five plays were holding penalties before I stopped this experiment. As far as ball carrying is concerned, I don't want anything that increases the chances of fumbles. So aggressive is out. There's a lot more fumbles in Madden 23 based off of the new hit everything and the new hit the pile and all that stuff. So to me, I'm either going conservative all game or balanced. Next up, we'll do defensive adjustments. When it comes to defensive adjustments, I find it's typically best to leave the auto flip function on. It's something that I used to take off and I used to recommend taking off, but to be honest with you, I usually forget to take it off now and it's just, I never really notice. Next up, we're gonna go over auto alignment. Now, I'm not gonna read the description because that doesn't really make sense. I'm gonna simplify it. At the end of the day, default makes the most sense and there's a very simple reason for that. Every defense aligns a different way to maximize the defensive coverage. Like if you're in a cover three, typically you'll notice that the cornerbacks are about eight yards off that's meant to you know basically help them not get beat by receivers so they can drop back and do their deep zones properly same thing with cover two you'll notice typically these cornerbacks are down closer to the line of scrimmage because they typically have to cover things like hard flats and things in this area now when it comes to base base is going to be essentially every defense will look the same when you come out so we just went over how tampa two typically has these cornerbacks down at about five yards you can notice now they're about eight yards off 
This is designed so your opponent has a harder time reading the defense. But like I said, to me, I'd rather them read the defense. I mean, you can you can mix this in. It's not a bad thing. But to me, I'd rather them be in position to play their zones the best. Because if they're meant to zone chuck a, a receiver, which is typically what cover two outside cornerbacks do, they're going to have a much harder time doing it all the way back here. Especially since a lot of times, you know, that, that both of these guys could just be on random slants. And they'll never get there to be able to redirect that route. So to me, having them out of position like this, it may make it harder to read the defense, but it makes the defense worse. Next up, we have ball in the air defense. You have four options here. You have balanced, you have play ball, you have play receiver, and you have swap ball. But I'm going to do an experiment once again with all four of these to see if the cornerback covers better at any point in time. I'm going to throw the same route towards a cornerback five different times. We're going to see what the results are. Against balanced, I noticed that the ball was getting knocked out just about every single time. In fact, I did not complete a single pass. And every single time that the cornerback knocked the ball away, it was a physical, violent animation. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's like he wasn't even breaking a sweat and he was just knocking the ball out. I almost got an interception there off of a tip ball. But at the end of the day, that was a very good defense. On play ball, this one here was a little bit different. The first two plays, I actually mossed the exact same defender with the exact same play. That wasn't a very good sign. But then on the next play, I got a little bit of pressure, and an under-pressure throw caused an interception. The cornerback did knock out the next ball, but then on the last ball, on the fifth attempt, once again, under pressure, and we get another interception. Now, on play receiver, you would think that the cornerback would be the most physical because he's playing the receiver, not the ball. The first three plays, he did actually knock the ball out. A couple of them were pretty dominant animations but i also did get two mosses against this particular type making it statistically the worst of all of them the last one was swat ball and swat ball looked pretty dominant like there were some real physical animations that came up one of the most physical was on the third pass attempt where he ripped the receiver out of the air I thought this one was going to be the best one, but then I did come down with a moss animation on the fourth throw, making this the second best behind default. So the final toll really made it obvious that there's really only two options. Balanced didn't allow a single complete pass. It was I was zero for five thrown against balanced. So if your goal is to get stops, if you're trying to get uh, you know a fourth down conversion stop or a third down conversion stop or a stop in the red zone, something like that, a situational type of play, or basically just trying to keep your opponent from going the length of the field, maybe late in the game balance is probably the best way to go play ball though got me two interceptions the only interceptions i got was on play ball i got two interceptions both of which were on errant passes based off of pressure but an interception is an interception and a turnover is a turnover so to me those two interceptions are way more important and i'd probably be running play ball all game with the exception of those critical situations next up we have cornerback matchups there's five different options here there's by depth chart by route running by height by speed and by overall all of them really have their place, but to me, I would say it really depends on who's on the field. That's the most important thing. If you obviously, if you have a guy like Tyree Kill out there, you're, even if your best cornerback is like a you know 95 overall or something like that, it really doesn't matter if he's not fast enough. Speed wins this game. So if you're facing, if you know you have really fast guys out there, you typically want to match them by speed. Otherwise, you'll just get beat over the top. Same thing goes with by height. Even though your best cornerback is your best cornerback, if he's like five foot ten or something, he's probably going to get mossed. Aggressive catch is a real thing in Madden 23. It definitely happens more frequently. If neither of those are an issue, you could easily go by overall or by uh, depth chart, which is essentially balanced. These are all pretty much the same thing. Next up, we have option defense. If somebody is running read options on you, you typically want to go to conservative because the quarterback always gets forgotten in read options. It's been that way for years. If you get broken off against one, uh, you know, one read option run with the quarterback, it's usually a way bigger run than your typical inside zone handoff, which is the other portion of a read option. When it comes to strip ball, to me, conservative is probably best because you'll notice that you get a lower break tackle chance, which is probably the most important thing because this year, breaking tackles is a huge uh, issue based off the fact that you can basically mash the A button and get out of it and continue the play. So this would probably be best to have on this particular year. Aggressive is not worth it because once again, you're going to get a ton of face mask penalties. This is something you'd really only want to set on once again in situational football. Like you're, you know, you need a fumble. If you're down a touchdown late in the game and you need a fumble, then you'd want to take a chance with something like the strip ball aggressive. Tackling is a little bit different though because you don't actually have the same type of penalty. If you go aggressive here, all you really have is a higher chance of broken tackles and fake outs. But I'll take that chance to try to get more fumbles. Once again, the most important thing in this game is to have possession. 
possession of the ball. Now next up we have zone drops. I'm sure a lot of people are watching this video just for the zone drops because every year probably my most asked question is what are you setting your zone drops to? It really depends on what type of defense you're playing. If you're playing match defense, I typically don't touch the zone drops at all. I run a lot of cover for match things like that. I run a lot of cover three match. A lot, I run a lot of cover two sync. Things like those defenses are essentially match defenses where the cornerbacks react differently. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about by picking a cover four quarters. If we go to the replay here and we watch this particular defender who's in the matching cover four uh, curl flap, for some reason he's doing a really weird like shimmy dance. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. But other than that, he's doing something which is called matching, which is essentially covering closer to like a man coverage. So I'll go ahead and I'll pick that play again. On the defensive side this time, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna change our curl flat. We're gonna just change it to something like a 15. Based on the fact that I set that back, he's about 15 yards away from the flat, which if I would've just left it alone, he would've did a much better job. This to me is something I only do situationally. If I have a third and short, I might set my hard flats to zero. If I have a third and 10, I might set my, my curl flats to 10 or 15. If somebody's running a specific route that I can't stop, uh, that's getting open at a distance of 15 to 20 yards, I might choose that. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave this alone the entire game. And then last but definitely not least, we have a new coaching adjustment on the defensive side, which is zone coverage. I'll show you guys what this looks like in regular and in match. To me, match, is way better, but let's start off with regular. On the defensive side, we're gonna pick cover four quarters. On the offensive side, we're gonna pick a very common play. It's in a lot of different playbooks, the PA crossers. So the only adjustment I'm gonna make is I'm going to pinch the defense. That cornerback's gonna get beat every single time because of how far off he is. I'm just gonna use our defensive lineman so I have no real effect on the play. You can see the tight end gets outside of that cornerback very easily. He's gonna do that every single time. So like I said, I'm just pinching the defense just to get that cornerback a little bit closer to his assignment so he doesn't get beat big off of spacing. And you can see Darius Slay, the, one of the better cornerbacks in the entire game, is getting cooked consistently by a pretty average tight end. These three other crossing receivers, they're pretty well covered to start. But once the play gets a little bit deeper, you can see that the separation gets much bigger. Number one, I mean, if at this point, CeeDee Lamb's not really open. But as the play continues, you'll notice that he gets wide open at this point, crossing the field. And if I move over to the other receiver across the middle, this guy's probably open too because there's nobody really tight to him. Now I'm going to make the adjustment where I put that zone coverage to match. We're going to make the same adjustment. We're going to pinch the, the defense one more time, just so the cornerbacks, like I said, so they don't get cooked uh, off of spacing. I'm going to use the defensive lineman one more time and watch what happens on this particular play as this time Darius Slay is all over it. Then we'll do that one more time. Like I said, we're doing, we have the exact same defense. We only changed the matching principle adjustment and you're going to see how, number one, he's playing a lot more physical as this time he's not even open and then he throws the ball the opposite way for whatever reason. I mean, everybody was locked up. A huge difference in coverage. Number one, the cornerbacks immediately man to these guys. They don't wait for the receiver to get down the field. They're on top of them about 10, 20 yards down the field, uh, as you can see, and they're playing much tighter. They're not playing like they were worried about somebody getting over the top. They're playing like they're manned to these guys. And if I go to the next receiver, you can see it's the exact same thing. There is somebody in the area on all of these receivers to the point where you can say that these guys are completely locked up. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys wanna see an updated video on this particular subject as the game changes throughout the year, because a lot of times they really like to change the game, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.